man, you're going to have to get an apartment here or something. You're here every day, it seems like. Yeah, man, I tried to live out here one time and it didn't work out. So Vegas. I just keep popping up for the parties. <laughs> Vegas living just didn't work out? Yeah, I love the cage parties out here. They're awesome. <laughs> um, first of all, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Great win, but I think everyone's now interested in what happened in Los Angeles with Israel. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you guys. <laughs> I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that for when I actually get the fight. But you, you'll share it when you do? Yeah. If I keep working and I keep winning, then eventually I'll get the fight. And then when I get the fight and I'll tell you guys, it'll be that much more juicy. I'll probably add a couple little spins and flares on it, but it'll be juicy. It'll be good for you guys. What's yeah. the fight? Let's be real here. All right. Nothing really happened. I'm just, a, I'm just one of those guys that you just really don't want to play with too much, right? Come from a different spot than most of these other guys. So... When we were in Vegas, I was getting, when we were in LA, I was getting ready to fight Thiago Santos and he was doing the media interview for Derek Brunson, right? It was one of those big things that the UFC do. For some reason, when we were walking in the stairway, I was going down the stairs and he was going up the stairs. While he was going up the stairs, he made some type of comment, right? So I made a comment back. And then he wanted to get big and bad, it seemed like. My coach went to pushing him the opposite way and James Vick went to pushing me the opposite way. Ever since then, I knew when the time comes, and we see each other again, I was gonna have something to say. As I was walking up to him yesterday in the parking lot, he stuck his hand out and said, Mr. Holland, and wanted to shake my hand. I'm cool with that, I'm gonna be respectful because he is the champ, you know what I mean? And he is older than me, you know? And I'm not really that much of a disrespectful guy unless you make me. Uh, then tonight, you know, and then last night when I'm coming out of the booth from the COVID test, you know, like I said, his energy was all friendly, you know, when I was walking up to him, Mr. Holland, as I was walking away from that situation, though, he says, I'm the guy he was talking about. What the fuck are you talking about me for? You're the champ, and I'm just some fucking guy coming up the ranks. You know what I mean? The target's on your back, not my back. Why are you talking about me? But then when I come out the tent and the security guard asks me, when am I going to fight Stylebender, all of a sudden you're big and bad when the security's around. But it was just you, and it was just me, and it was just regular people. You were kind of cool, you know what I mean? But now all of a sudden your voice and your tone changes. And then when I'm walking out to the fight, you hear the guy's music and you're kind of doing your little dance into the guy's music. And I'm like, all right, that's cool because the guy's shit was pretty good. But my song comes on and I know my song's the shit. It literally got best album of the year. If you listen to R&B, you listen to hip hop. But he ain't jumping and bouncing to my music. So obviously for some reason, this motherfucker don't like me. But fuck him, right? Because I don't really care about him too much. Except for the simple fact that he's played with me a couple of times. Now I gotta beat his ass or do something else to him. But let's not talk about the something else, right? So then when the dude lands the freaking head kick, he kind of like makes some type of little animation sound. You know the shit the style bender does. So I pointed at him. Then I went over there to proceed on the fight. I slipped, went back to doing my thing. Fight's over and I look over at him and I try and watch my words because we're on ESPN. But the only thing I wanted to say is, what the fuck you want to do now? But he don't want to do nothing. He just wants to play the game and play the game and play the game. I'm not the one to play the game with. You mentioned on the broadcast after the fight that, you know, it's not necessarily the UFC's fault, but you're fighting these guys with no names. There's a guy with a name called Mike Perry, who I know you've wanted to fight for a while. He has an empty date on November 21st. Can we see you in there against him? Is that a fight you want? It's a fight I want. And then if you ask Mike Perry, He'll probably be like, it's a fight he wants. But then when the contract comes in, he'll be like, I don't want that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we'll see. You know, if Mike Perry really wants to fight, he'll see this interview and then step up, sign the contract, let's fight. We can do it at 180 pounds. That's as far as down I'm going to go. You said you wanted to fight Chimaev at 85. I'm pretty sure he would smash you. I mean, maybe people will respect me now because I went out there and I, uh, I smushed somebody. I smushed you, brother. Right? So give me some respect. Fight me. I, I know you and Mike have you've, you've been public about your you know your disapproval of him. I guess have you guys ever actually spoken in person or had any back and forth through DMs or anything? Yeah, we just you know we do a little DMs. You got my phone? Who got my phone? I can read all the messages to you right now. No, I'm just playing. I'm trying to catch a, I'm trying to catch a flight to go see my son. But uh, nah, yeah, Mike. You know he likes to play. I like to play. But I like playing with Mike. You know just because he hit an old guy in Texas, and I mess with Texas really tough, and I don't play that shit. What exactly happened in the finish tonight? It was his neck or? Yeah, it was his neck. Unfortunately, it was his neck. Uh, that's a really rough situation because, you know, the neck can take off your career. So I hate that his neck was hurt, but, you know, shit happens. And I'm sorry. Cool. Uh, so 
you know, Mike Perry aside, are we going to see you in November and December? Is this just going to be the Kevin Holland apex now? Yeah, if Mike Perry doesn't want to fight me in November, throw him off the card and just put me on. Boom. Congrats on November. Hey, Kevin, to go back to the finish a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. you talk about it's the neck. Did, yes, you, did you feel your shoulder go into his neck? Was it your head just in the, mo like yes, from sir. your shoulder. point of view? Shoulder. My shoulder was in his neck. I really feel like uh, when I was trying the OSP slash Von Flu choke, I really feel like that was kind of getting there, but the guy was really explosive type strong when he would try and bridge, so I couldn't stay on it like I wanted to. But, uh, man, me and Coach were talking about them takedowns, right, Coach? And we did it just how he talked about it. And uh, he always said, if you want to hurt the guy, keep your hands locked. I kept my hands locked. I didn't want to hurt the guy, but like I said, I'm trying to catch this flight. I want to go see my son. <laughs> we know that he was a short notice opponent. How many seconds did it take for you to accept it? One or two? No seconds. <laughs> no seconds. My manager never even hit me up and asked me if I wanted to take the fight. He just said, yes, give us whatever you got. He knows how I get down. I mean, it, in all honesty, though, it's like, was, it, it, was there any, like, hey, I got a cram for the test, study the tape, anything like that? Or was it just whatever happens out there, that's how I'm going to approach it? No, I told my manager, I was like, if we can get somebody else, that would have been awesome. But at that point in time, he had already said yeah to the fight. And then I screenshotted this message that this guy had sent me a long time ago that wanted me to fight him for a different organization. And I was like, well, damn, at least we get paid for a lot more money than we would have got paid back then, right? So, you know, hey, good things happen when you wait. Final one from me, uh, a lot of people would say 2020, you know, is when my world got turned upside down. I mean, this has been, you know, your year. Very few guys have had four wins in a calendar year. How would you describe just your whole life, obviously professionally, and then, you know, just how would you sum it up? And I've, I've had an interesting life growing up, and it's always been some type of uh, flare in the air, right? So this year it's been flare in the air for everybody. A lot of people just didn't grow up like how I did, so they ain't used to it. I know, Kevin, at the very end, you see you go over to the team, and you, it's almost like you were apologizing to the team, uh, uh, your opponent's team. Did you hear something that um, I, I know when it stopped, we couldn't really hear that there was a verbal tap. We were just kind of wondering what happened. Did you hear it as well? Did you hear a verbal tap, or did you, was it the ref? Me. He told me. He said, my did neck, he? my neck, my neck. And so when he said his neck, I looked at him, and I said, your neck? He said, yeah, looked over at the ref, the ref seen it, he stopped it. If the ref didn't stop it, I didn't really want to get up because, you know, I mean, he might have been like my neck. Then I got up and then he was like, whoa! So I just, you know, didn't want to take that chance. But uh, yeah, he said his neck. I realized it was his neck. Like I said, neck's nothing to play with. So I, there's no reason to do anything after that. You know, we'll see if he's really serious or not. And he was serious, so it sucks. Yeah, I think that's great. I couldn't hear that at all. I think that's one of those things that things happen so quick in a fight that us watching it don't see that yeah. happen. So I thought that I think that's great that you actually heard that. Just to go back to Izzy before we end, is it? Are you? What does a fighter think when you see a guy like this that's in there watching your fight? Is it a distraction when you know he's gonna be chirping? Because I'm hearing you say all these things that you noticed while the fight was going on, while he while you were no, walking out. No, he made me better tonight. Thank you. He made me better tonight. You know, and it's like a. You know, I was concentrating on getting home from his flight, you know, but uh, uh, Izzy made me a better man tonight. I appreciate him, you know, for, for being there, for making his little animation noises, and for thinking that he was going to distract me. <laughs> but it's nice to know that he's watching me, though, right? He's at the top, and he's watching me. Some weird shit, but I like it. Well, are you a guy that does the whole mental visioning and sort of you could see where you're going in the future? When you look at 2021, how far until you see that fight happening with him? I don't know, you know what I mean? Uh, security's right there, so I don't wanna say I see it in the parking lot, but uh, you know, I mean, shit, with me, anything can happen. But uh, you know, whenever it happens, it happens. 2021, I cannot tell you what's gonna happen in 2021, you know? 